Hello, my name is Ardi and we are going to solve problem 4.42 from Nielsen and Riddle book. So the question is, use the mass current method to find power developed in the dependent voltage source. So this is the dependent voltage source and we are asked to use mass current analysis. So let's draw the loop from here. Okay, let's name this as loop I1. And then let's name this loop here as I2. And then let's name this loop here as I3. Okay. And this dependent voltage source has I delta in it. But I delta is here. But then we know that I delta is I1 minus I3. Okay. Now let's take a note of that. So we know that I delta. So I1 is the same as the same direction as I delta. But then I3 is in the opposite direction of I delta. So I1 minus I3. Okay, that is good. Now our task is to do KVL at loop I1, I2, and I3. Let's start with KVL at loop I1 first. Okay, KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Okay, let's start from this 30 volt voltage source and the current is flowing from the negative side to the positive side. So our sign will be negative, so minus 30. And then I will have 3, but we are working on I1 here. So multiplied by I1 first, but then here I2 is flowing to the opposite direction. So I will have minus I2. And then let's move on to that 20. So I will have 20 and that is multiplied by I1 and then I3 is flowing to the opposite direction. So I will have minus I3. And then the last component is that 7 and the only current that pass through it is I1 and all of that will equal to 0. Okay, now let's add them up. So I1 came from here. 3 plus 20 plus 7. So I will have 30 I1. 30 I1. And then I2 only came from here. So I will have minus 3 I2. And then I3 only came from here. So I will have minus 20 I3. And all of that will equal to minus 30. We move it to the right hand side. So we'll have 30. And let's save this as equation number one. Okay, now let's move on to the second one, which is KVL at loop I2. Let's do exactly that. KVL at loop I2. KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Okay, now let's start from this voltage source here. I will have 53I delta. But then I delta is I1 minus I3. So I will have 53 I delta. So I will have I1 minus I3. Good. And now let's move on to this resistor here. I will have 5. And currently we are working on I2. So I2 came first. But here I3 is flowing to the opposite direction. So I'll have minus I3. Good. Now let's move on to the last component, which is this 3 ohm. Again, the I2 came first, so I will have I2. But here I1 is flowing to the opposite direction of I2. So we will have minus I1. All of that will equal to 0. Okay, now what can we do from here? Let's do some mathematics. 53 I1 minus 3 I1. So I will have 50 I1 here. 50 I1. And then I will have, for I2, I will have 5 plus 3. That will be 8. Okay, so we'll have 8 I2. And then for I3, I will have minus 53. And then minus 5. So I will have minus 58. I3. And all of that will equal to 0. Okay, so I will have this equal as equation number two. So now, let's do KVL again at loop number three. So let's do exactly that. KVL at loop I3. KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal 
to zero. Okay, for I3, I think I will start from this 20 ohm resistor. So we we'll have 20 here, and now we are working on I3, so I will have I3. But then I1 is flowing to the opposite direction, so minus I1. Okay, good. Now I will have plus this one here, that will be 5 I3. But then I2 is flowing to the opposite direction, so I'll have minus I2. And then here I have a voltage source and the current is flowing from the negative side to the positive side. So the sign will be negative. I will have minus 30. And then I will have plus again 2 and the only current that passes through it is I3. Okay, and all of that will equal to 0. Okay, now I1 only came from here so I will have minus 20 I1. And then I2 only came from here, and so I will have minus 5 I2. And then I3 came from all the terms, so I will have 20 plus 5, which is 25, and then plus 2, which is 27. So I will have 27 I3, and let's move this 30 to the right hand side. So I will have 30. Good, now let's save this as equation number 3. So now we have three equations with three variables. We should be able to solve it. So now let's solve one, two, three. Solve one, two, and three to get I1, I2, and I3. Let's use our calculator to set up equation solver, which is number five. And then three variables is number two. And let's plug in the coefficient. So I will have 30 and then minus 3, and then minus 20, and then 30. 30. Good. And now I will have 50, and then 8, and then minus 58. Okay. And then 0. And then this one, I will have minus 20 minus 5 and then 27 and then after the equal sign I will have 30. Okay, I will have I1 is 52 ampere. Oh, nice number. So I will have I1 is 52 ampere. And then what is I2? I2 is what is where is my calculator? 110 Okay, so I will have 110 ampere. And then what is I3? I3 is 60 ampere. So I will have 60 ampere. But then the question is not about the current, but the power in this dependent voltage source. So we need to find out the power. The power is just the voltage multiplied by the current. But then I know that P is equal to the voltage is 53 I delta. So I will have 53 I delta. I delta is I1 minus I3. I1 is 52. And then minus I3. I3 is 60. And then the current. The current is I2. And I2 is 110. Okay, now I will have the power. Maybe let's just use calculator for this one. Okay, let's set up as computation. And then 53 multiplied by 52 minus 60. And then multiplied by 110. That should be minus 46 and then 640. And the unit is what? So I will need to convert it into kilowatts so minus 46.64 and the unit will be kilowatt i think that is the right answer for this question this is the final answer and thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye